I used to get jealous every summer when I saw my neighbor pulling garlic bulbs the size of his fist, while mine looked like tiny marbles. Year after year, I thought I was doing everything right. I followed advice I read online, mixed wood ash and phosphate fertilizer into the soil each fall, and carefully planted my cloves. And every year, my harvest seemed to get smaller, not larger. I felt like garlic just didn't like me. But everything changed after one simple conversation with a neighbor who happens to be a chemist. He opened my eyes to what was really happening underground in my beds. What he showed me was so simple that I almost laughed at how long I had been doing it wrong. Today I want to tell you about the mistake that cut my garlic harvest in half and the method that finally doubled my bulbs without any extra work. It all started when I was complaining to my neighbor about my disappointing garlic. I told him I had been mixing wood ash and phosphate fertilizer into the soil before planting because that was the standard advice I kept hearing. He shook his head and said, You're canceling out your own fertilizer. I thought he was joking. Canceling it out? How could two good things together become bad? He invited me to his kitchen, and within five minutes I finally understood. He filled a glass with water and added a little wood ash. The water turned cloudy like gray soup. Then he sprinkled in a spoonful of phosphate fertilizer. After a few minutes, white flakes settled on the bottom of the glass. He pointed and said, That's calcium locking up phosphorus. When you mix ash and phosphate in the soil, much of the phosphorus becomes unavailable to plants. It's there, but your garlic can't eat it. That was the moment everything clicked. No wonder my garlic was starving even though I added plenty of fertilizer. The nutrients were tied up in forms that plants can't use quickly. The roots absorbed less, the leaves turned pale in spring, and the bulbs stayed small. I thought I was feeding my garlic, but really I was putting its dinner out of reach. Once I stopped combining wood ash and phosphate, my harvest doubled. My average bulb weight jumped from about one ounce to two ounces, sometimes more. And the storage quality improved dramatically too. What I want to share now is exactly how I prepare my beds today without that destructive combination. So you can avoid the same mistake. First, let's talk about what garlic actually wants. Garlic loves a neutral to slightly acidic soil around pH 6 to 7. It needs loose structure so the roots and bulbs can expand, and it thrives on steady nutrition over time. That means organic matter, a balanced supply of potassium and phosphorus, and nitrogen early in the season. But it also means those nutrients need to be available, not locked away. So here are three simple methods my chemist neighbor recommended, which I have tested and proven in my own beds. The first method is for acidic soils. If your soil is on the sour side, sprinkle about one cup of dolomitic lime per 10 square feet, plus a bucket of finished compost spread evenly. The lime gently raises the pH, while compost adds organic matter and slow-release nutrients. This method balances the soil and feeds garlic steadily. The second method is universal and the one I personally use most often. For every 10 square feet, I spread two tablespoons of sulfate of potash and one heaping bucket of compost. Potassium sulfate dissolves completely, doesn't lock up like ash, and delivers potassium right to the roots. Compost provides the organic base and microbial life. Together, they create a fertile bed that garlic responds to beautifully. The third method is the simplest, for busy gardeners who want a low-maintenance option. Just apply one and a half buckets of well-finished compost per 10 square feet. No mixing, no measuring. Compost alone can grow surprisingly big bulbs, especially if you refresh it every year. It releases nutrients slowly, builds soil health, and is almost impossible to overdo. Now let's walk through the actual calendar of preparing a bed for fall-planted garlic. In early September, I pick the location and clear away crop residues. Garlic does best after cucumbers, squash, or early cabbage. I avoid beds where onions or potatoes grew because they share diseases and pests with garlic. In the second week of September, I test the soil with simple pH strips from the garden store. If the pH is too low, I apply garden lime as I mentioned earlier. If the soil is too alkaline, I add peat or extra compost to bring it closer to neutral. Getting pH right is crucial because garlic struggles in very acidic or very alkaline conditions. 
In the third week, I apply whichever fertilizer scheme I've chosen, either lime plus compost or potassium sulfate plus compost or just compost alone. I spread everything evenly and dig it into the top eight inches of soil. Then I break up clods with a rake so the texture is fine and crumbly. In the last week of September, I shape raised beds about six inches high and 40 inches wide. This gives good drainage and makes spring growth more vigorous. I cover the beds with a light mulch of peat moss or shredded leaves and water them once. Then I let the soil settle for at least two weeks before planting. That's very important. If you plant cloves immediately after digging, the soil collapses and drags them deeper, making it harder for shoots to emerge in spring. The timing of planting depends on your region. Where winters are cold, I plant garlic between the first and third week of October, about two weeks before the ground usually freezes. That gives cloves time to form roots, but not shoots. In milder areas, you can plant later, sometimes into November. There are some critical mistakes to avoid. Never use fresh manure in garlic beds because it promotes rot and fungal problems. Never water heavily right after planting because that can create a crust on the surface and suffocate young shoots. And never combine wood ash with phosphate or bone meal because the calcium binds the phosphorus and the garlic goes hungry. Now let me tell you what happened after I switched to these methods. My average bulbs went from about one ounce to two ounces, sometimes bigger. That's the difference between marble-sized disappointments and plump, satisfying garlic heads. The percentage of top-quality bulbs increased from about 60% to more than 85%. And the storage life improved as well. Instead of losing half my crop by spring, I now keep firm bulbs until May, sometimes June. There are also regional adjustments you might need to make. On sandy soils that dry quickly, I add more compost, up to two buckets per 10 square feet, and sometimes a bit of clay to help retain moisture. On heavy clay soils, I add a bucket of sand per 10 square feet to loosen the structure. The principle is always the same. Balance the soil so garlic roots can grow strong and deep. Feeding garlic in spring is also important. In April, when the shoots are a few inches tall, I scatter one tablespoon of urea per 10 square feet to boost green growth. In early May, I add one tablespoon of sulfate of potash per 10 square feet to support bulb development. These small spring feedings make a big difference in final size. The harvest calendar looks like this. Prepare beds by late September, plant cloves in October, mulch with straw or leaves to protect them through winter, then water and weed as needed in spring. By late July or early August, depending on your region and variety, it's time to dig the bulbs. I cure mine by tying them in bundles and hanging them in a dry, airy shed for two to three weeks. After that, I trim the roots and tops and store them in braids in a room around 65 degrees Fahrenheit with about 50% humidity. Done properly, the garlic stays solid and flavorful until the next season. Looking back, I realize the biggest mistake wasn't just mixing the wrong fertilizers, it was blindly following advice without understanding the chemistry behind it. The simple kitchen experiment my neighbor showed me changed the way I think about gardening. Nutrients aren't just about adding more. They're about availability, timing, and compatibility. When you respect that, plants reward you generously. So if you're frustrated with tiny garlic, don't give up. Don't assume your soil can't grow big bulbs. Most likely, the problem is not how much you're feeding, but how you're feeding. Separate your wood ash and your phosphate fertilizers. Use lime or compost at the right time. Focus on soil structure and pH. Follow a simple schedule. And watch your garlic double in size just as mine did. That's my story, and I hope it saves you from years of disappointment. If you found this helpful, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel for more practical gardening tips, and share it with your friends who grow garlic. Together, we can stop wasting fertilizer and start growing the kind of garlic that makes your neighbors jealous.